Hey Summoners, welcome back to our channel and another Pro Guides Low Elo tier list. This video will feature the latest patch, 13.6, and if you're looking to climb fast, look no further. I'll give you some insight in regards to what the best picks are and provide you with updated tier lists so you can reference them to win your games. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content like this, and let's get started. Starting with the top lane, here's our tier list for the patch. Make sure to take a note of it. I'll also take a quick second and mention that our OP picks for the patch are Malphite, Yorick, and Olaf. Not too far behind them though are Mordekaiser, Zac, and Singed in the S plus tier. Now for our featured picks, let's start with Malphite. He's an unkillable tank that also deals ridiculous amounts of damage. Our analysts rate him as one of the easiest champions to play because his laning phase is safe and is basically unpunishable for aggressive play after level 6. With access to his ultimate, he can escape from basically any attempt at killing him. If Summoner Flash is available, this makes him basically ungankable. Alternatively, if he's poking down his opponents heavily, he can always fish for an opportunity to trade kills and buy his team time elsewhere on the map. Moving on to his carry potential, Malphite is a scary one. It's absolutely insane that someone as tanky as him can nearly one-shot most carries. Following some recent buffs, he's become a much stronger top laner who can adapt to matchups by either maxing Q or W. You'll need some knowledge or first-hand experience to know how to apply this, but the fact that he can switch it up is a huge deal. Aside from being a great escape option, it's more important to note the explosive team-fighting power his ultimate brings. Hit a 5-man ultimate and you're going to win at least 90% of those fights. Your team has to be irredeemably behind to lose a fight with a clean start like that. Even if you only hit two targets, it's a big deal. And in the worst case scenario, you can simply look to target the main DPS on the enemy team and basically one-shot them. After jumping into the middle of a fight, you're going to be able to deal some solid AoE damage with your E as a follow-up. With an assassin or long-range carry to follow up, you're going to basically turn every fight into a 5v4 off the top. Next on the list, we've got Singed. He's an s tier pick this patch and he's one of the best carries in spite of being somewhere in the middle in terms of difficulty. The return on investment is solid, but you definitely can't expect to pick him up and dominate after only a couple of games. One thing that makes Singed hard is that he's very different. Unique is a better way to put it and you're gonna have to learn how to play the game with a new approach. That said, something that does make him easier than the most difficult characters is that he's able to win a good number of matchups and resort to proxy farming the harder ones. Can't beat your opponent? That's fine, just negate the laning phase altogether and you're good to go. As to why Singed is such a solid carry, it's because he's a great team fighter and side laner. Having both options available to you is a game changer when you're playing the top lane. In a sense, you always have some control over the flow of the game. With his speed, he has no issues running towards enemy carries and creates a big enough distraction for the rest of his team to get the job done. In the side lanes, he can use this speed to force the enemy team to respond to his inevitable pressure. Another strength Singed brings is his ability to make picks to start a fight. Any mispositioned enemy is going to get quickly flung into Singed's team, resulting in an easy 5v4 right after. That's it for the top lane rundown, so let's head into the jungle next. Here's our jungle tier list for the patch. Take note of the OP picks, Jarvan, Wukong, and Nocturne. Not too far behind them, we have Ramus, Mordekaiser, and Dr. Mundo, who are some pretty oppressive characters due to the tankiness and absurdly high damage they bring. On that note, let's talk about our first highlighted pick, Mordekaiser. He's s tier pick for a good reason, being relatively easy to play, while also having some of the highest carry potential in the game. In terms of difficulty, one thing players need to be aware of is when a teamfight is coming up. You want to make sure you have your ultimate as it vastly changes how much impact you have during the fights. When you're absurdly fed, it really doesn't matter, but it is a nice tool to have available to you when needed. What helps make him easier is how quickly he spikes. Even with just a couple of items like Rylice, he already comes online and starts wrecking havoc on the enemy team. He's gonna walk at you menacingly and there's nothing you can do about it. For his carry potential, it's pretty clear that Mordekaiser is one of the best team fighters at all stages of the game. His damage and tankiness make him a valuable member at all times. After level 6, Mordekaiser can also invade the enemy jungle much more aggressively because of his ultimate. Even if his enemy's allies come to assist him, he can use his ultimate to create that oppressive 1v1 situation, even if only temporarily. Next on the list, we have Dr. Mundo. 
Following some buffs, his clear has become one of the fastest and safest in the game. The bar of entry is set quite low and that's what we like in a solo queue champion. Difficult to mess up with and consistently impactful. In addition, Mundo is one of the easiest champions in the game, making him easy to learn. In fact, our analysts place him at the easiest difficulty, so definitely consider learning him if you need an autofill character or just want to add a tank to your roster. Now to elaborate on how Mundo operates as a carry. Since Mundo clears the jungle much faster than before, he's able to farm up and build solid gold leads pretty quickly. This allows him to get item advantages and hit his spikes a little bit earlier. Like I mentioned before, Mundo is a great champion to have on your team because he's tanky and deals solid damage. During early skirmishes and objective fights, Mundo is already prepared to frontline and proves to be a giant threat to any enemy he chooses to hunt down. Winning any fight early on leads to him snowballing even harder and slowly choking out the enemy team. That's it for the jungle, so let's move on to the mid lane next. Before we talk about our featured picks, take a quick glance at our tier list for the mid lane. We're putting Aurelian, Soul, and Nivea and Annie in the OP tier this patch, followed by Malzahar, Cho'Gath, and Vagar in S+. We'll highlight a Nivea as a potential carry for this patch. Nivea is a bit harder to learn, but if you invest the time in your normal games and practice with the right mindset, you'll be ready to hard carry your games shortly after. The two main things you need to be aware of when playing a Nivea are mana management and positioning. Again, put in the time and a lot of it will come to you naturally as you begin to get a better feel for her. If you're an assassin player or someone who likes to play more mobile champions in general, there will be a few hurdles you'll need to make it past to play her properly. However, our analysts have her maxed out in carry potential. Anivia is absolutely insane. In spite of being a high DPS carry mage, she's super tanky. You can't frontline with her, so don't take this out of proportion. But seriously, she's one of the most durable carries for sure. Her passive is also pretty effective in fights, as long as she falls in a good spot with allies still around to protect her. At the end of the day, Anivia is one of the deadliest team fighters in the game. She not only deals ridiculous damage, but controls the flow of fights decisively with her utility and ability to manipulate space. Her ultimate is a gigantic stay away from here circle, and she's also able to create a wall during the middle of a fight. As you improve with Anivia, you'll find ways to basically force your opponents to get stuck in your ultimate or cut the enemy team off from each other to cleverly win fights. Moving forward, let me also ask our question of the day. How do you feel about this current meta? I personally feel like mid laners that are strong are currently a little too hard to kill, especially if you're playing against one that builds Rod of Ages. It definitely feels like you need to blow too many resources to pick off what's essentially a backline carry. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and let's move on with the video. Next we have Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath is not the easiest but is one of the easier champions to learn as he's rated 3 out of 7 by our analysts. Since he is a melee champion, you do need to be careful about not getting poked hard during the early game so you don't get forced back to base. However, to compensate, he has very good sustain as long as you're farming properly. Farming with him is also pretty easy, so once you make it past the early game, you're gonna be in a great spot. Cho'Gath is able to carry games with his surprising burst damage and scaling. One issue with him later into the game is that he can get kited by the enemy team, but the tankiness and damage he brings to the table are impressive. Especially when you can force the enemy team to come to you, you'll be in a great spot. Cho'Gath's Q and W provide excellent utility on top of burst damage, and his ultimate is super scary to deal with later into the game. A lot of players don't expect to get 100 to 0 instantly, but the moment they're silenced, there isn't much they can do to stop it if Cho'Gath has his flash available. If they ever get hit by Q randomly, they're as good as dead. That covers the mid lane pick, so let's move into the bottom lane next. To start it off, here's our tier list for this patch. In the bottom lane, we have Vagar, Neela, and Ziggs in the OP tier, while Jinx and Jin follow up in the S plus tier. Our featured bot lane pick this patch is Neela. For her rather low difficulty, you're looking at a character that can basically solo carry games. She's just that good. Our analysts place her at a 3 out of 7 difficulty, but maxed out for carry potential. If you're okay putting in a little bit of time to learn her, you're gonna get so much out of it. Be careful when playing Neela, don't get caught off guard by her low attack range. This does make her early laning phase a bit harder, but with time, you'll get used to it no problem. Another thing you'll need to practice is using your E properly. You'll want to use it aggressively, but also do it in a way that lets you stay safe. The only real advice I have for you is to go into your normal games and experiment. 
you'll learn the limits from first-hand experience and will have to start trusting your gut in your ranked games. A big part of what makes Nila so good is her W. Simply put, this ability is broken. It's not only great for herself, but her allies as well. If you learn to use this ability well, you can literally win the fight for your team, so make sure to be thoughtful about how you use it. If you're ever lost, go look into how high elo players or professionals use Nila and pay particular attention to how they use her W. Another reason why Nila is so good is the natural design of her kit. If she pulls ahead, she's going to snowball hard and outright dominate, closing games pretty quickly. That covers the bottom lane, so let's wrap things up with our supports. Like always, we'll wrap up the video with our various support tier lists. We separate them by their sub role, so our OP picks this patch are Blitzcrank, Melio, and Annie in their respective lists. Plenty of S tier picks to choose from as well, so feel free to take a look and freely play who you enjoy. Following his recent release, our analysts could not help but include Melio this time around. He is a bit difficult to play, especially since he's new and there aren't as many resources to learn him available just yet. Another thing is that his kit is unique. I know I've used that word a bit before, but it's true, and anytime someone's tools differ vastly from everyone else's, the champion is naturally gonna be a bit harder to learn. You'll need to put in some time figuring him out, but he's definitely going to be worth it. Another thing to note is that he struggles against engaged supports like Nautilus and Blitzcrank, so you'll want to practice positioning and playing safe. Regarding his carry potential, our analysts rate him 6 out of 7. His ultimate is a game changer, and the fact he basically brings Summoner Cleanse on behalf of his allies lets him turn the tides of what would otherwise be lost fights. It's a pretty big deal that he brings so much powerful utility. Being able to cleanse Summoner spells off his allies using his ultimate is huge. There's also another thing to take note of. Since he is new, a lot of your opponents are not going to be ready for these things. Getting rid of that Summoner Ignite in the middle of a fight will catch your enemies off guard and give you several opportunities to pull ahead and crush the enemy team. With supports finished, that wraps up our low elo tier list for the patch. I hope you enjoyed it. Like always, let us know if you have any feedback or thoughts in the comment section down below. Best of luck this patch summoners, go win your games and I'll see you all next time.